When talking about bands with a very distinct sound, there's no way to leave out Korn. Enjoy our recreation of David Silveria's drum sound. Korn is one of the biggest metal bands today, headlining festivals all over the world. When they formed back in the early 1990s, Monkey, Fieldy and Silveria had already played together for multiple years in a band called LAPD. With the addition of Jonathan Davis as lead vocalist and second guitarist Brian Welch, Korn was born. Now that it's 30 years of Korn this year, it's a great opportunity to celebrate their achievements and David Silveria's outstanding drum sound in particular. Of course it's important to mention that Silveria left the band in 2006 and after a short phase of greats like Terry Bozio and Joey Jordison filling in, Ray Luzier became Korn's drummer. In this video, however, we want to focus on the first years and concentrate on Silveria's sound. You want us to do an episode about Luzier as well? Let us know in the comments. Korn are often called pioneers of new metal and what this means is that they created a sound that really set them apart from all bands that were around during their starting years. One thing that stands out when listening to Korn is the rough drum sound and the pretty percussive roaring bass that's also very present in the mix. While their debut album Korn and their second album Life is Peachy gained a lot of attention, it was their third album Follow the Leader that really brought them to new spheres. With this album reaching number one in multiple countries' album charts, a new era for Korn began. Here's one of the most famous songs off that album, Freak on a Leash. There's some pretty unconventional drumming going on, right? That's what makes David Silveria so special and how his drumming really shaped their music. To recreate his sound, we reached out to his longtime partner company Tama and they were kind enough to provide a kit for this video shoot. The kit we picked is a Tama Star Classic Performer. With its birch maple hybrid shells, this kit delivers the right clarity we need for Silveria's sound. The sizes we used are a 22 by 16 kick drum and 10 by 7, 12 by 8, 14 by 12, and 16 by 14 inch toms. The snare is a 14 by 6 SLP G maple snare. What's special about this snare drum is the thick 11 mm shell that's pretty close to the Silveria signature snare with its 10 mm G maple shell. But let's begin with the kick drum. The drum heads are a Remo Power Stroke 3 on the batter and the stock rezo head with a porthole on the rezo side. The batter head is tuned just above wrinkle and the rezo head a little higher. After getting the bass drum legs to the right position, it's time for some muffling. Here we need quite a lot to get the kick drum to the right length and tonal qualities. To be precise, it's one pillow and two blankets placed inside the drum, leaning against both drum heads. With a TGD-71 inside and a TGD-70 in front of the kick drum, this is the mixed kick drum sound. For the snare we picked a coded Remo controlled sound head for some extended durability and its open sound qualities. No muffling is required and the tuning here is high. To capture this thick maple drum, we placed an M201 as top mic and used the same model as bottom mic as well. After the mixing, this is what our Freak on a Leash snare sounds like. For the toms, clear double ply heads are the ones to go with here. Emperor clear heads have the right very defined attack we need and the extended durability is suitable for Silveria's way of playing the drums. The rezo heads are the stock ones that came with the kit. Regarding the tuning, Pascal tried to get as close as possible to the original pretty low pitches and this is the relation between the top and bottom head demonstrated with a 10 inch tom. With this same tuning principle applied to all four toms, they are ready to be mic'd up. 
This also means there's no muffling involved here as well. The mics we chose are small diaphragm condenser TGD57s for their crystal clear and very defined sound. A clear attack is what we need here. Now that the drums are dealt with, next up are the cymbals. Yes, David Silveria is a Pisces guy, but we don't have enough Pisces cymbals at our studio, so let's check on what we can find that sounds close to his setup, which consists mainly of Pisces root and signature lines. Since he likes playing 15 inch hi-hats, Pascal tried to put together one as well. To mimic the heavy cymbals Silveria picked from the root line, we ended up using two bottom cymbals, a 15 inch A new beat bottom and a 15 inch K fat hat bottom used as a top symbol. The second hi-hat is a 14 inch A custom master sound hi-hat. Pretty close to the sound edge one Silveria played quite often. The ride symbol is a 22 inch A custom ping ride that really lives up to its name. The crashes are an 18 inch A custom crash, an 18 inch A custom projection crash and a symbol that you would definitely not expect here. A 20 inch A medium light symbol from Zildjian's classic orchestral selection. The last ones missing here are a 10 inch A splash and a 19 inch A ultra hammered china. The overhead mics are two MC740s and we placed an additional MC950 for the hi-hat, an M90 Pro X for the ride cymbal and one M201 for the room facing the kit. Time for Pascal to take off his shirt and give this kit all the energy he has for our version of Freak on a Leash. Sometimes I cannot take this place. Sometimes it's Some powerful drumming here. It's obvious to say not all drumsticks survived this video shoot. After this album, something's changed in Korn's album production process. With producer Brendan O'Brien coming in for the production of their fourth album Issues, he, according to what Silveria posted once, wanted them to play to a click track for all recordings and their writing process changed as well. This and some other changes rang in a sound change. However, Issues is one of Korn's most successful albums until today. Here's Falling Away From Me. To get to this drum sound, we don't need to change too much regarding the setup. Toms and kick drum are fine as they are, but the snare needs a different tuning. A lower tuning to be precise. This is the falling away from me snare sound. One other sound that's really important for this song is a very short trashy one Silveria uses in the main verse groove. We got our hands on a so-called crasher and with the help of a percussion holder placed it on the kit. Now we're set for our falling away from me performance.
you want to know how Pascal mixed the audio to reach those two drum sounds, make sure to check out the full length audio mixing breakdown video on artofdrumming.com. Also, those sounds will be available as a sample pack for you to download at shop.artofdrumming.com. Korn really helped to define the sound for a new genre and created something so unique that they will always stick out. Do you like their sound? And what do you think about our recreation? Make sure to leave a comment and subscribe for more recreations in the future.